It's always exciting when a baseball player finally gets to the big leagues. Years, decades even, of patience, hard work, resiliency, failure, and support from their loved ones finally paying off. And finally getting the satisfaction of, I made it. So who had the air fly out of the balloon the quickest here? Meet Hogan Harris. He's still getting back in the groove of regular pitching after missing all of two years ago with an injury, and he has struggled with walking batters throughout his time in the minor leagues. We'll get back to that in a minute, by the way. But on April 14th, 2023, the Oakland A's call him in to pitch in the fifth inning of a Friday night game against the New York Mets. And it is shockingly apparent how little the A's broadcast seems to care that this is, at this moment, the biggest night of Hogan's baseball life so far. They're advertising an auction over his pitching. Imagine that, making it to the big leagues and you're immediately playing second fiddle to an auction advertisement on your team's broadcast. At least they're giving you some dignity on the visiting team's feed. Four pitches into his night, Harris gets the first batter he faces to ground out to second base. One out, still with the auction promo dominating the at-bat on the A's broadcast. Hogan Harris is officially in the MLB record books as the 22,888th player in league history. Pitch six into the outing, things start to unravel a little bit. I feel the need to give you a quick refresher on the most basic rules of how pitching in baseball works. This box is called the strike zone. It goes from the batter's knees up to their hips, and pitchers need to throw the ball into this box for it to be considered a strike. If you miss, it's called a ball. Four of those, and the batter gets to go to first base for free. Unfortunately, in the second batter-pitcher matchup of Harris's career, he struggles to come anywhere near the strike zone, and the hitter gets to stroll along to first base. Hogan falls behind the third hitter he faces early as well, still struggling to consistently find the plate. After working back into a full count, one strike away from putting Mets second baseman Luis Guillorme away, he misses badly again for the second walk of the night. Hitter number four sees exactly four balls as well, all in a row. The fourth ball is again nowhere close. Holy God, what are you showing me? His head. Come on! The bases are now loaded, all due to Hogan Harris's inability to throw the ball into this imaginary box. Brandon Nimmo steps up to face Harris with a chance to do some damage. Pitch number one is a fastball that misses very far off low and away again, before some damage is actually done to Nimmo's back. Ah. One run in and no Met hitter needed to take a swing to get it in. When Harris throws a strike to Starling Marte to make the count three balls in one strike, he does so after throwing 10 straight pitches out of the strike zone. Audiences tuning in for this Friday night game in Oakland are watching a man's dream gradually turn into a nightmare in real time. One pitch later, Marte walks on a fastball off the plate inside. Two runs now in the inning, not one batter needing to swing to do it still. Five batters in a row have walked or been hit by a pitch, and that brings up Mets superstar shortstop Francisco Lindor. Now, Harris is starting to right the ship a little bit. He finds the strike zone enough to get two balls and two strikes on Lindor. One ground ball double play away from escaping this mess of an inning, limiting the damage. Putting a band-aid over the boo-boo before it gets, like, weirdly colored or infected or something gross like that, but no. Two, two pitches, line to left and a hit. It's gonna go all the way to the wall. One, one run scores, two runs score. Marte's being waved home. The throw to the plate is not in time. It's a three run double. Five runs have scored against Hogan Harris already. He has only gotten four swings on his pitches in seven batters faced. Pete Alonzo works a five pitch walk for the fifth Hogan Harris walk of the inning. And that was it, the very end of his first ever big league game. Final line, one third of an inning, one hit allowed, five walks, six runs allowed, all earned. Oh yeah, that's because the guy who came in after Harris hit the first batter he faced and allowed one of Harris's leftover base runners to score. The A's walked 17 batters in the nine innings of this game. When Harris went to sleep that night, he did so with some of the most 
astronomically bad single game stats you could dream of. Rate of 162 runs given up every full game. My goodness. Let's make that even sadder. I have two things that make this even worse, if you could believe it. Harris threw 39 pitches in this game. Only 14 of them were indisputably in the strike zone. 39 pitches, 25 missed the mark. But it gets worse than that. Only two pitchers in the last 80 years of MLB history have had a game where they allowed at least five walks and at least five runs in less than one inning as their MLB debut. Two guys have been this wild and this bad at preventing scoring in their first ever MLB game. Hogan Harris is obviously one of them. The other was 15 years old. When the Cincinnati Reds somehow allowed someone the age of a high school freshman to stand in on a major league mound during World War II, Hogan Harris, a grown adult, was the only other guy to have that awful of a start of their career. Harris was sent down to the minor leagues the next day. For all we knew, and all you know, this was the only time he ever pitched in the big leagues, and it went like that. To this day, searching him up on Google gives you someone else's picture on his ESPN bio. That's how easy it would have been for Harris to just fade off into obscurity, never being seen again after this dreadful night in Oakland. I've deliberately kept the tone of Harris's performance very poorly, because you need to be lulled into the feeling of having your dream seemingly explode in front of you, and in front of paying customers and people watching on TV, and definitely your loved ones tuning in just to see you. Um, okay, we are cooked. Yeah, we are absolutely cooked, chat, GG. For that to be how it goes when you finally get your chance, that's just gotta be crushing, in ways I'm struggling to even put into words. It becomes one of the easiest cases of human empathy to feel for this guy. So now, what if I told you Hogan Harris would figure it out not long after this? The real reason we have to talk about Hogan Harris's almost unprecedentedly awful big league debut was that it's not the end of the story. He had the saddest beginning to a career you'll find on day one. And then he got back on his horse and did something about it. This was not gonna define him. Immediately from the next time he took the mound. And he strikes out Tucker here. That's his first big league striker. Brady goes down on three pitches. Harris, after picking up his first major league strikeout, now with back-to-back -back strikeouts here in the Blues OPS, going from Class A to Triple A. He strikes out the side here. Gets his first, second, and third major league strikeout. And now Jolts goes down. How about this? Four consecutive strikeouts for Hogan Harris in his second major league outing. Five shutout innings with just one hit allowed against the defending World Series champion Houston Astros in his second big league game with just one walk being negative sells all you probably heard about of hogan if anything was the terrible first game unless you're a diehard A's fan i'm guessing you didn't know about the much much better second game it takes a lot of courage grit and perseverance to immediately figure it out and rebound from a game like that least of all against a championship caliber opponent and you probably had no idea that almost two months to the day after his debut, he pitched seven innings, only allowing one run in front of a packed Oakland crowd, walking zero batters in those seven innings, too. And Hogan Harris strands the go-ahead run. It makes Hogan Harris a great human interest story and one of the easiest guys to root for in baseball. Sure, the final season numbers for him in 2023 weren't pretty, but they sure were in 2024. In his first game, he only pitched a third of an inning with a 162 ERA. Higher numbers are bad for ERA. In his second season, after not even making the team out of spring training, he pitched 72 and a third innings with a 286 ERA, 38% better at preventing scoring than the average MLB pitcher that year. First start he made this season, five and two thirds innings, one run, didn't even know he was going to be pitching 24 hours before. This is a man who continues to find ways to be resilient. When life told him he didn't give the customer a drink after all that journey with the Krusty Krab pizza to get to the house, he didn't fall on his face and cry. He responded right back, and he did it 
under just as brutal of a vibe as his first game. I'm going to briefly take a moment to talk about the 2024 Oakland A's bigger picture situation. The A's knew they were going to be moving out of Oakland after the season. The team was bad. The fans felt like they were watching a loved one on life support slowly fade away. Everyone involved knew that jobs were going to be lost, families were going to be uprooted, the community was going to be torn apart. TV analysts were crying left and right on the broadcast when the last game in Oakland finally came. But yet, in the midst of all that sadness, which most definitely seeps into the locker room, and you're kidding yourself if you don't think the players feel that, Hogan Harris showed up for work in an aging, outdated A stadium everyone outside of Oakland hates, and he delivered. He did it after seemingly having his dreams crushed as quickly as he accomplished them. Years of work culminated in this first game, and then he transformed that into a really, really admirable rebound. He did it as the team around him was literally crumbling to its end. And you gotta give him props for that. This is not a man who let the bad vibes get the best of him. This is a man who went out and made the best of the bad vibes. And it would more than put a smile on my face to see him keep doing it.